give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. It's called the track, too tough to tame, and for very good reason. The Darlington Raceway stands as one of NASCAR's oldest surviving racetracks, and this beautiful facility in South Carolina, dubbed the Lady in Black, is going to play host to 113 laps of non-stop racing action. The OMS Route Truck Series. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the show. My name is Greenfly, uh, excuse me, my name is Nolan Rempel, and welcome to Green Flight TV, bringing you all the action here from start to finish here tonight from this beautiful 1.3 mile oval. The Darlington Raceway has been a track that has long been uh, steeped with history, and it is a track that is notoriously difficult to pass at. Tire Strategies is going to be the name of the game tonight, as could be the fuel strategy. The fuel number supported for tonight could be looking at between uh, 53 to 55 laps or so, and with that halfway mark right at lap 56, we could be seeing some drivers attempting to try to stretch to see if they can't make it to that halfway mark before having to come down for just a single pit stop so far on the afternoon. The point standings entering today's race look a little something like this with Spencer Ray still holding the top, but only by two ahead of Robert Peterson. Ryan Dingler had an unfortunate race last week in Martinsville, was fighting for the lead, got turned by his own teammate Matt Cherry in a battle for the lead in turn two late in the race. and. Uh, we could be seeing Ryan Dingler, in fact, send this one out as he has not been opting to uh, make any sort of practice laps or qualifying efforts so far here tonight. So could we see another Badger Racing driver fall out of OMS SRL competition? Grant Peterson still holds the number four spot, although he is also not present tonight. And then, of course, Sean Kaiser closes out the top five. Right now, you've got first on down all the way to sixth separated by a mere 13 points. It is tight, tight margins up at the top of the sheets. So who knows at this point how this race is going to pan out or how we're going to be seeing racing action develop from an absolutely historic racetrack here this afternoon. As we've got trucks still on the racetrack. Tell you, well, why don't we ride on board with Austin McCulgan as he works his way onto the back straightaway. He'll take you for a qualifying effort around the Darlington Raceway. He will not take you for a qualifying effort around the Darlington Raceway. Really put an emphasis on just how tricky of a racetrack this is and not able to put down that opening lap. He'll give it a second effort. Noah Rainwater trying to work his way around the high banks of 304. A little bit of a better launch out of the gate this time by as the driver of the 05 Silverado will look to uh, pick up his first lap of qualifying here. Really working the high banks of one and two. Ducks off the wall just a little bit to get that good run down the back straight away. And into turn three, the tighter of the two. Slowing the brakes a lot more, down to about 147, 146. We're jamming back on the loud pedal. Tethering that throttle a bit as he crosses the start finish line. And lap number one, good enough to put him up into the 10th position for now. Will it be enough to stay there, though, is the big question, as a lot of drivers still have yet to put down qualifying laps. No Rainwater down the one back stretch for the second time tonight as he's trying to once more see if he can improve on that qualifying position. Oh, again, a bit twitchy there off of turn number four. Is it enough? He'll drop to 11th place, and will this lap improve him? It will. It will! Noah Rainwater goes from 11th up to 5th, so a top 5 run there for uh, Noah Rainwater. An absolutely phenomenal drive for him. Meanwhile, you've now got the likes here of uh, Brandon Cluj working his way up around the racetrack. The number 69 truck out of turn, numbers 3 and 4. Currently sits 14th on the qualifying sheets, trying to see if he can go one better, and he will not improve his time. He will improve his time, so Brandon Cluj up to six, a bit of a delay there on getting that lap time in. So Brandon Cluj will put down a time good enough for sixth spot. 21 drivers are scheduled to make the start tonight. So far, only 20 of them have put down qualifying laps. And Nathaniel Lane is the lone driver that has not made an attempt to qualify in race number nine of Ole Miss Truck Series competition here tonight. So we are looking just about ready to get this show on the road as... Qualifying will draw to a close within these next uh, 
Five seconds. It's going to be a race all about strategy tonight. And uh, I can tell you right now, this is not a track that likes to be overdriven. And I have a feeling we're going to be seeing quite a few trucks leaving with some good old dart to the stripes before this race is out. Qualifying is over, and we are getting set to grid things on up. So here is a rundown of what your starting grid is going to look like as we get set to duke it out for 113 laps around the Darlington Raceway. Starting on the pole, you've got Spencer Ray alongside Robert Peterson by 35 thousandths of a second. Matt Cherry and Baron Mortz will bring up row number two. Row three holds no rainwater and Brandon Kluge. Row four for Sean Kaiser and Gage Teft. Stephen Purcell and Austin McCall can round up row number five with Nathan Schiffle and Brad Vandehey to close out the top half of the field. Jacob Doys and Maxwell Kroll will be on row number seven. Row eight holds Zachary Kreischer and Daniel Half. Row nine, Noah Swafford and Justin Wilson. Brett Rucker and Keith Handler bring up row number 10 with Daniel Ames being the lone driver. Not to put down a quality lap. We'll be starting down in 21st. Drivers one by one gridded up, just waiting on Morton, Rainwater, and Kluge, your fourth, fifth, and sixth place starters as uh, drivers going to look set to get some heat into those tires. It's a chilly track surface tonight, only 78 degrees down on the racetrack, and could this mean trouble for any drivers that are trying to get themselves with a good run in the early goings? going to be a lot of effort to try to get those tires up to temping, fight those loose moments. We already saw coming out of the pits just how sideways Austin McColgan got as we went on board with him and his effort to try to get a qualifying lap down. He did qualify 10th, but no doubt that out lap did not help matters for the driver the number 51. Well, all drivers have gridded on up, and we are ready to duke it out. One pace lap is the order of the day before we will go to green flag racing from the Darlington Raceway. Spencer Ray has had a pretty good season so far, and he's looking set to see if he can continue his strong momentum that that Bush Ice F-150 has held all season long. It is a tall order, though, to conquer a track like the Darlington Raceway. And uh, you know that Spencer is going to be fighting that car or that truck from start to finish all night tonight. Only has two wins on the season for all eight stars that he's made, but has only failed to finish outside of the top ten twice in that same time span. Robert Peterson starts to his outside. Could we see Peterson take another podium? He has yet to score his first win of the season, although he has only fa failed to finish outside of the top ten once all season long, and has four top fives to his name, one less than points to Spencer Ray. The pace truck is off. We're working to the Geico Research Zone. It's time to go racing at the Lady in Black. Ray will lead lap number one to green as the rest of the pack in hot pursuit just behind. But Spencer Ray getting the whole shot down to turn number one. Further behind, no rainwater. Brandon Clues, Sean Kaiser, and Gage Taft all packed up. Line is turned to the big battle from fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Trying to scrap it out down to the turn number three, down the Boeing backstretch. Clues looking for the inside of no rainwater. See if he can't attack to push himself into a top five early on. He's going to get to the inside, but is that going to be enough to make the move into turn two? Doesn't look like it. Brandon Kluge will be forced to tuck back in line as Sean Kaiser remains packed up on the back bumper, the number 69. Back to the inside goes Kluge, and the caution flag is out for the first time tonight as Nathaniel Ames has bended hard into the wall. 
and will be forced to take a tow. Caution flag number one on just the first, uh, on the, just the fourth lap of this race. A very early caution then here tonight for the Donaldson Raceway. Take a look back as he was all on the inside of Noah Swafford, side by side in two. And Swafford just comes down, hooks aims hard into the outside wall. Holy cow, picked the 28 truck up. That is a violent impact that Nathaniel Ames took. And that tells a really violent story there as you get a look at this one at speed. Yikes. Talk about a ride for Ames in the number 28 machine. This is going to, once again, be uh, at full speed. And golly. It's not a sight you want to see early on. This is going to be on board with Ames. Hang on. I think what we just saw there was Noah Swafford trying to come off of the wall there to see if he couldn't uh, make a pass. And unfortunately, when he was trying to pinch the 28 down to side drafted down the straight and it didn't work out. So put Nathaniel Ames down and out for caution flag uh, number one on the afternoon. And Noah Swaffer going to be in the pits for extended repairs as well. Spencer Ray got out to a pretty good launch there early on. He was able to take uh, this first lap in storm. And will we take the one to go signal this time by? We sure will. All drivers are still on the lead lap, so quick, quick caution here tonight. We're stacked up, we're doubled up, we're ready to go back to green flag racing. And Ames will make his way back out onto the racetrack. A few laps down, but he's managed to get that truck more or less repaired, and he is going to do his darndest to try to catch up to the tail of the pacing line before we go to green flag racing, but he's going to have to hustle. He's not going to get there. The field's working through turn numbers three and four. He'll take it back to the restart zone. And the green flag's back in the air. Again, the whole shot for Spencer Ray as he takes it down into turn number one. Matt Cherry going to try to pick up second. Robert Peterson third. Bear Morton fourth. Single filing it out really quickly as Darlington races so often do. Spencer Ray, the main driver, leading the way. Exit of turn number four. Jerry is trying to see if he can maybe make a look to catch up to your race leader, but right now, Ray has been by and large the truck to beat. Now that said, it's still very early. That caution we just saw could have given these guys the opportunity they needed to save enough fuel under caution to try to push their fuel tanks to the halfway mark and make this a one-stop race. Ames can for sure make it on a one-stop from here, but he is also two laps down, remember. Robert Peterson still pressuring Matt Cherry for the number two spot while a little bit further behind 
Got drivers like Gage Tatton and Sean Kaiser scrapping it out down three and four as they'll thunder down the front straightaway once more. No rainwater holding his ground, but Sean Kaiser wants to try and find a way to get through. Thought about looking low on the 05. He decided better. Gage Teft and Nathan Shiflett still waiting to the wings as well. Kaiser to the inside of Rainwater. Trying to see if he can secure an overtake. Oh, contact as it comes off the wall of the 05. They'll remain side by side off the Boeing backstretch and Rainwater just manages to pull around for uh, the number six position. Sean Kaiser forced to tuck back in line. Solid attempt there from Sean Kaiser. Just wasn't enough to actually make it happen. Not for lack of trying, though. Kaiser's the driver that never wants to stay still for long, so we could be seeing him make another move before too long. Behind him, Gage Teft is trying to apply some of that pressure as well as Teft having those uh, age-old blinking issues that he's uh, becoming a little bit more known for. Nathan Schiffler just behind. In the Menards F-150, seeing if he can potentially make an attack to go for the eighth position. And so far, not seeing too much of the way of on-track overtakes. and. Again, this is to be expected, right? It's all about the strategy game. How do you manage your tires? Noah Swafford at the number 26 uh, Kodiak truck making his way back out onto the racetrack after turning Nathaniel Ames hard to the outside wall in two on just the fourth lap of this race. So all 22 trucks back on the racetrack. But Swafford almost 10 laps down. Cherry, Morton, and Kluge in a three-way scrap for third, fourth, and fifth. While just behind them, Sean Kaiser again trying to attack the inside of Rainwater. Right on board. Oh boy, with the Camerota truck part, Silverado giving it the beans right now to try to get up and around uh, Rainwater. They'll make that lunge down to the turn numbers one and two. And pull it off the back straight away. Sean Kaiser gets clear. Good, solid effort there from Sean Kaiser as he blitzes clear for the sixth position. And now Gage Taft trying to follow it up. Rainwater starts the freight train as he runs the outside, and this side-by-side -side behind is giving Sean Kaiser the momentum he needs to try to pull clear up the road. Stephen Purcell is just a little ways behind with uh, Austin McColgan trying to work to the inside. The driver of the number 17 scored as 51, making some ground as McCulgan puts himself back to 10th where he started tonight. And now it is Zachary Kreiser under fire by a duo of tide uh, color machines headed up primarily by Stefan Purcell. Rebound off the corner, Kreiser gets loose. Slides down, Brett Vanahey will take it three wide around the top, and Stephen Purcell gonna pick up a spot as well. If you wanna talk about a move, that was a move right there. Take a look back at this one, watch what Brett Vanahey does here, as this is coming off of turn number four. 
Watch the nine, gets sideways, slams the wall, Purcell jams the brakes, and Brad Vanderhey says thank you very much, goes two for two on the front straightaway. Rainwater and Schifflet now, eighth and ninth. Purcell still trying to keep uh, Jacob Noyes at bay while still trying to run down Brett Vandehey as well. A couple of more classic skis being put onto these trucks, particularly for Purcell. Hey, Starlington, that means it's throwback night. Oh, into the outside wall again goes Vandehey. And Purcell thinking, going to go for it. Taking it down low over the number 53 truck. And can Purcell make the pass for 11th? Looks to the inside, tries to send it in deep. Brett Vandehe is still stuck up on the top. And Jacob Noyes will follow him through as well. Vandehe going to lose two spots in the course of the lap. Kreiser still in the fray and looking like Noyes. Not out of the woods yet. Had to take a defensive line to three to keep Vandehe from coming back at him. Jacob Noyes, of course, running the more exclusive uh, throwback scheme to the league, uh, running the old OMS IRL colors back when this was just, when this was known as the OMS SAR IRL instead of just OMS SRL. Now, they ran the trucks here for their first ever season. We're switching to the Xfinity cars for the next three seasons following. So this is an extra special throwback night for the driver of that number three truck. Further up the row, Matt Cherry into the wall. Sean Kai's gonna get to the inside and Gage Taft will now have to try to sleep through on the bottom. And could we see Matt Cherry knock uh, Knock himself down two positions, looking like he itched back out. So Cherry will lose one to Kaiser up the road. After a huge mistake and side slap at the outside wall out of turn two. These walls are by big time. There's not a lot of room to go at a track like Darlington. The racing groove is absolutely minuscule, only about two lanes wide so difficult to try to go side by side and that's what makes side by side racing at Darlington look so incredibly spectacular and for one of these corners you have to take very much a bit of an arcing line in order to get the best possible drive Jacob Noyes under fire Brent Vanahey to the inside can't pick him off They remain packed up on the back bumper. Take a ride on board here with Vandehey, and uh, from behind we'll get a ride aboard with uh, Zachary Kreiser. Watch how Kreiser kind of hits that first apex there in turn one. Let's the truck track out wide before arcing it back down for the second apex. That gives him a good run down the back straightaway. And he's gonna try to mimic that line here in turn three a little. Less exaggerated there for Kreiser because he's trying to close up to Vandehey, but the, the uh, base concept is there. Matt Cherry risking being overtaken by Gage Tap now as Cherry to the outside of two. And Noah Rainwater has put himself back up into the mix.
The 05 machine remaining pinned up on the outside line like an arrow down the back stretch. He'll keep Gage Teft at bay. As way down low on the track on the front stretch is Jacob Noyes. So Noyes having some sort of problem. Take a look back. And whoa, sideways out of turn two. We'll give the spot to Brett Vanderhan. Now noise on the fire by Keith Handlin. Handlin going to get to the inside at turn three. And Nathaniel Ames has had another problem as he's going to pull it off the pit road, but no caution. Taking a look back, Ames side slaps the outside wall. And he is just going to pull it to a stop on the front straightaway. Decided he was done for the night. What a shame for the driver, the number 28, as Teff will overtake Matt Cherry. A 45 truck down five positions. Looks like it may very well be a short, uh, a short run truck. The MPI Simex machine has burned up all of his equipment and is now on the backslide. A lot of uh, field spread in this field for now with Jacob Noyes is going to lose out big time to Keith Handlin scraping the outside wall and now is a nice stripe along the right side of that truck. Kreiser will also look to the inside to put down the three truck another position. Although couldn't make the F, uh, enough of a chase to make it happen. Vandehey and Purcell remain packed up line of stern and it's two very distinguishable trucks out on the racetrack. So Purcell Vandehey remaining packed up line of stern. The only other battle that's really at a similar caliber is between Brandon Kluge and Sean Kaiser. Also separated by about a quarter of a second. Turning lap number 35. Racing action has, for the most part, settled in for the long haul. There goes Kaiser. He's going to try to get around Brandon Clues. Looks for the inside line. Should be able to make a pretty easy pass of this one here down to the turn three. And Well, I thought he might at least, but evidently not. Sean Kaiser lacking that conviction to try and really gun it down to the inside of three. Oh, Clues getting into the outside wall just slightly out of turn four. And pushes up the track at one. And Sean Kaiser remain just behind. So the Camerota Truck Parts Camaro, I think, is really, he's being aggressive, right? He's trying to find a way to get to the point. The problem is Kluge is not giving him any chance to breathe in the slightest. And it does make it an, an astronomically difficult challenge. Kluge and uh, Kaiser. They will continue to duke it out amongst themselves. The furthest battle for position up the racetrack. That is within half a second. Spencer Ray way up the road has pulled three seconds clear from Robert Peterson. And that is not a gap that I think is going to be uh, diminishing anytime soon. We are also starting to close in on first round of pit stops. Could have seen some trucks braving pit road before too long. Oh, 
contact between Kaiser and Cluj again as they nearly spin it around. And Sean Kaiser beating the doors here off the 69 truck, really trying to make it happen. All the while, Barrett, whoa, into the outside wall again will go Sean Kaiser. Sorry, Barrett and Brandon Cluj, and this time, Kaiser finally clears, throws it in deep. Trying to drive away from Cluj. Rainwater and Tefta both reel themselves in. Bear Morton, in the meantime, has come down for his first pit stop of the night. Morton going to be on for the two-stop strategy. Rainwater going to continue to scrap it out with the 69 truck and looking like that mistake of hitting the outside wall will cost Brandon Cluj a lot more than he realized. It's not the only battle that's getting close is Keith Handlin on a long run charge. Oh, he's almost going to put Purcell into the wall side by side in three and four. Contact between the two. Brett Vandehey still in the mix, and Zachary Kreiser holding that inside line as well. Handling clears. Vandehey backs out. Purcell maintains 11th. A lot of these battles, though, they're starting to close in as a result of all of these trucks that are now starting to see those that are better on the long run pace cycle to the point. And now that Kaiser's got to clear a clue, can he fend off Noah Rainwater? He's got to make it about 13 more laps if he wants to be good to go to the end on fuel. And problems for Kreiser. And Zachary Kreiser has pulled it to the inside to let these guys through. I, my mistake, I thought for a moment he hit the wall. That strike from earlier must have been from a uh, prior incident. And Noah Rainwater licks the stamp and sends it around the outside. Take a look at this. In a turn one, Noah Rainwater says, see you later. That was a phenomenal pass there from the 05 Silverado to get around Sean Kaiser. Put Rainwater to a podium. The outside wall goes Cherry once in turn one and then again in turn two. That lets Austin McCall get through and Kreiser, sorry, Schiffler looking like he's going to be taking it to pit row this time by. So Schiffler going to get down on the brakes. Whoa, and in fact nearly missed pit road. Nearly went right into the pit barrels. Leaving this a two-truck battle now between Keith Handlin and Brett Vandehey. So the two of them will look to keep duking it out amongst themselves. Catching Matt Cherry pretty steadily here. It gaps down half a second. It was up to about eight tenths of a second just a lap ago. And look at how quickly Handlin runs down Cherry. That 45 truck, you tell us, clutching coast, and he's trying to make it to halfway. Handlin takes it low. He'll clear the 45. Cherry's last lap was uh, six tenths of a second slower than Keith Handler. We'll see what the difference was this time by. About a whole second slower. 31.2 to a 32.2. 
So Cherry definitely in fuel conservation mode, and I think it may be the same story for Jacob Noyes uh, further in the back uh, with Steph Purcell right behind him. Just behind them, Maxwell Kroll and Daniel Half going to look to duke it out. And almost around goes the 32. Ay, 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 ay. It started to get a little bit more hairy for a few of these battles out there on the racetrack, as well as that the battle for the race lead is closed down. Remember what I mentioned earlier on about how Ray had about a three-second gap on Robert Peterson. That gap has been steadily closing down, and it's at about four-tenths of a second as Spencer Ray might ultimately be trying to make it to halfway. Rainwater couldn't do it. He is into pit road. The halfway mark in this race comes at lap number 56, going to 57. So another five laps. Ray has to make it. And he is trying desperately to keep Robert Peterson behind him while this is all going on. Further behind, Austin McCulgan and Keith Handel about to exchange positions. And even further back, Matt Cherry and Brett Vandehey will do the same. All this down to the turn one. Oh, Handlin to the wall. Oh, is he going to get turned? Around goes Handlin. Around goes McCulgan. They're both going to spin and then turn number two back onto the racetrack. No caution yet. We're still green. He will keep it just off of the racing groove, and we will not get a caution for a crash in turns one and two. That has got to be infuriating for Keith Handlin as he and Matt Cherry come together. Take a look back, Handlin got in deep. McCulgan ran him over. And they just both ended up getting hooked together. They couldn't get off of each other. Whoa, and now down to the inside goes Kreiser in a big way. Sorry, that, uh, not Kreiser, that's Noah Swafford. Holy cow. Half and crawl, side by side, down to turn one. Oh, to the outside wall, once, twice, for the 19 Kodiak Silverado. Hard lick into the fence. And again, no caution. And McCogan now around. Everyone is wrecking. And still no yellow flag because of how far down he is. These guys cannot catch a break right now right at the pit stop window. Austin McCogan was trying to come to pit road and just locked the rears. Slid it in hot and noses it into the wall. That'll cost him precious seconds. Zachary Kreiser still working his way around the racetrack, trying to see if he can push it past halfway, then just go full chat to the end of this race. Meanwhile, Spencer Ray and Robert Peterson have officially crossed the halfway threshold. Man, how Keith Handlin and Austin McCall get wrecking did it bring out a yellow is beyond me. That shoulda, coulda, probably would have been a cause if it was anywhere else, but not here at Darlington. Ray and Peterson gonna stay out one more lap. Same with Kaiser and Kluge. And both battles within just two tenths of a second. The 
It's effectively a game of chicken right now for the uh, for the front run to see who's going to come down to pit row. Brett Vandehey will pit from fifth. And Spencer Ray will blink. The number six takes it to pit road. And now flash up on screen, Spencer Ray highlighting the green, and then Robert Peterson working his way into turn number one. This is your race leader in for his one and only stop of the night. Robert Peterson looking like he's slowing in turn four. He is going to be in out of turn four. So that track map, top right of your screen, that is the battle right now for the net race lead. And will they be able, will Spencer Ray be able to get up and around Robert Peterson? Kluge and Noise are in as well. Sean Kaiser stays out to get that bonus for leading a lap. Ray's out, trying now to run down the 97. Ray's on the front straightaway. Rob Peterson still putting right sides on. Trying to gun it out of pit road. He's in turn one, so is Spencer Ray. And Ray takes the net race lead right back. Drives around the top. Valid and ever though for Robert Peterson, who's now going to be on about one lap pressure tires from here to the end of the race. Justin Wilson with a problem on the racetrack as he was trying to make it to pit road. And tracked it out a bit too wide and just looking to lock it down. And oh, he went in too deep. Wilson had to correct. He overshot the actual pit entry, carrying too much speed. Actually, I don't know what the heck was going on, but he was definitely slow enough to make it. That's an interesting one. Well, we are still under green flag conditions. We've had one yellow at lap four and have been green flag racing ever since. Pit stops are complete. It's an all out sprint to the end. You're watching the OMS Road Truck Series on Green Flag TV. Back uh, live on Green Flight TV, Baron Morton picks up the race lead as Austin McCulligan bins it out of turn number four in the front straightaway, and he will bring out caution flag number two just past the halfway mark. This is going to bring everybody that was on two-stop strategies into pit road. This is going to leave pretty much everybody good to go to the end of the race now on fuel. Interestingly enough, Spencer Ray is in as well, having pitted less than 10 laps ago. Same story for Matt Cherry. Robert Peterson would be picking up the race lead, it looks like. 
Nathan Schiffler and Brandon Kluge ultimate to pit Rhodes. It's a very split call as to who will be pinning in under uh, this next yellow flag. Second caution of the afternoon, and uh, we made it past the halfway mark after a very early wreck at just lap number four. Bear Morton first in. Unsurprisingly, he'll be the first out as well. And Rainwater, I think... He did not. I thought for many, he misses pit box. He did not, though. He made it out in time. So Robert Peterson with the race lead. Let's take a look back and uh, show you what happened to bring out this uh, second yellow flag of the night. Coming off of turn numbers three and four, Austin McCall going to the outside. Just gets a bit too close to the wall. And unprompted, the back end comes around. Does a great job to keep that off of Spencer Ray before looping it fully. Going sideways and ends, ended up nosing it into the outside wall as well, right there. He had those wheels turned back to the left, and it just didn't go the way he was hoping it would. On board. Huh. Interesting there from McCall. It almost looked like he was trying to rip that truck back to the right. I'm not going to make any accusations, but I mean, I don't know why he would have been turning the truck that far right if uh, it was down and out. Ugh. Who knows? Sometimes it's a mystery what goes on in the mind of a driver when they're losing control. So while we're pacing around behind the iRacing uh, pace truck, some of the upcoming races on Green Flag TV on March the 20th, the beer will swing out to Portugal for the Autodromo Internacional do Algarve at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. The Speed Tires Plus Cup Series will be the first of two different championships that will swing down to Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas at 9.15 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday night. And then, of course, the VSCA Sports Car Championship has their second longest race of the season with the 12 hours of Sebring. It'll be one of the most hotly anticipated races, though. Rain will be on the forecast, and uh, the precipitation chances looking at about 51% for the Saturday race last I checked. So we could be getting our first rain race on Green Flag TV. And then, of course, on Sunday, the Classic IndyCar Series will finally make their return to broadcasting as they will be making their season opener at Coda as well after a speed on Thursday. So a big week of racing coming on up and we'll get the chance to talk to about all of that and more in the uh, days coming forward. For now though, we've got a race to lock up. So we will get set to go back to green flag racing from the track too tough to take. Rainwater continuing to remain side by side. And Spencer Ray just clearing from the 05. Gage Tap will look to the inside as well to pick off the 05 and bump him out of the podium. More and more drivers starting to get back into the right rhythm of things. Matt Cherry trying to work his way around the outside of Rainwater. No, Rainwater, one of those trucks that came down a pit road under this caution flag, and he is now lost. About four or five positions in these, just these first two, three laps out of the hitch on the restart. So a shocking drop for a driver that has shown a lot of promise so far today. And for the 05, 
It might be in a world of hurt for the remainder of this race tonight. Battles off for second. But Spencer Ray looking to the inside of Sean Kaiser. Gage Teff sits just behind as well. You saw him flash in and nearly turn Sean Kaiser in turn three. Speaking of, Gage Teff going to look to the inside to try to pick off the 24. Oh, that's tight! And Gage Teff not going to be able to make it happen. Teff remains fourth. Kaiser up to third. Matt Cherry and Nathan Schiffler just behind. So the 24, the 33, the 45, and the 15 all packed up line astern. Robert Peterson up the road, trying to see if he can fend off Spencer Ray. Battle for the race lead is very much on. Now Spencer Ray led a huge chunk of this race early on. And he's gonna be looking to see if he can continue to replicate some of that success. But right now, his main focus has got to be on trying to get around that 97 machine. And that is no easy feat. When the track at the corners is about a lane wide. He's going to try to make the most of it as he got to the inside momentarily. Wasn't able to make it happen though. Oh, Maxwell crawls sideways on the Boeing back stretch. The Kodiak Silverado gets back rolled and it looks like he has backed it into the wall. We will not get a caution fly. We'll keep it green. This is where he was situated on the racetrack, but... Uh, Less than ideal moment there. And we'll get back, we'll get to this replay in a moment as Robert Peterson side by side with Spencer Ray for the lead down the back straight, uh, front straight away. Spencer Ray to the inside, trying to pick off Robert Peterson. Can he go for the lead? The Ford Motocraft F-150 still ripping the top as they work off a of turn two and down the back stretch. Ray gave it his all. Not done yet, Phil. Back to the bottom. Still a lot of laps left to be run. Turning lap 77. It's right down low. Robert Peterson remains in second. And man, they are still side by side. Now again, Robert Peterson did not pit on that last caution flag. He is on six lap older tires. And that will force him to yield to Spencer Ray. Now we can take a look at what happened to Maxwell Kroll. Side by side with Jacob Noyes. Oh, he gets into the wall and then gets hooked by McCulgan. Boom, into the inside fence. Went for a high-speed pirouette before he came to rest. Brandon Clues, the next driver under fire from Bear Morton. Morton's still trying to work on uh, Brandon Cluj as there's two drivers that both pitted under that last yellow flag at lap 65. So right now it's all down to driver skill and Cluj able to rip that top a little bit more. The outside lane is a great defensive line at the Darlington Raceway. There's nowhere for the driver underneath you to go unless he wants to put you into the wall. And that's a surefire way to get yourself sent and make a quick enemy at a track like this. The Spearcrest Digital uh, uh, Silverado still lagging behind Brandon Clues just a touch, keeping pace. 
but has not shown enough pace to make a proper uh, attack on the 69. Up the road, Sean Kaiser, Matt Cherry, Nathan Shiflett. All of a similar battle, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Getting set to uh, be back underway. Matt Cherry trying to see if he can attack. Sean Kaiser looking high, then trying to cut back down low, trying to use some of that momentum that he can carry off the top shelf of the outside to see if he can uh, uh, size something up in a turn one and two. Just hasn't been able to get exactly the right momentum, but he's got the right idea, right? Try to set yourself up with that momentum. Just up the road, the battle for second is also on. Robert Peterson clipping that outside wall just a tick. Entering turn three. Each Taff still applying some of that pressure down the main straight. 28 laps to go. And Spencer Ray already starting to try to walk out that gap. Keith Handlin going to get into it with Brett Vandehey and uh, looking like they'll remain. Knows the tail for 12th. Robert Peterson, Gage Tap continuing to scrap it out second and third on the racetrack up the road as, my goodness, this is a whale of a fight is taking place in a block from Peterson as they catch Justin Wilson and Gage Taft going to use Wilson as a pick to get by the 97. That was an aggressive look from Taft to make that work but boy did it ever work. Behind them, Nathan Shiflett under fire by Brandon Kluge. Bear Morton in the mix as well. When it gets down to the closing laps, the racing really picks up an aggression, even at a track where it's incredibly difficult to make a look. The 15 to shift left, pulls to the inside. Bear Morton will take that spot with ease. He's up to seventh. Van de Hay and Handlin still with about .14 between them, but Matt Sherry and Kaiser even closer. About a bumper's length, or about a bumper's width, excuse me, separating the 24 from the 45. Again, Sean Kaiser is really leaning on the deck lid of these trucks that he's racing, trying to force them into those mistakes. And I mean, it's worked for him so far. But Matt Cherry has shown a lot of resilience. Has not been one to back down so far tonight.
uh, now contact again as Cherry and Peterson make a bit of a door check there for third. Sean Kaiser to choose to aid the 45 and push him clear of the 97 and Cherry's gonna leave him in the dust. Robert Peterson trying to hang on to whatever spots he can in the closing laps. But that 97 machine, even despite the laps uh, not being too significant, six lap total tires, it's still having a clear impact. Oh, Kluge, can he try to look around the outside? He thought about it, this is nerve wracking to watch. As Kluge opens up the door down low, and this time he's gonna force the nose in there. Kaiser can't get down. Kaiser uh, couldn't make it happen quick enough, and Brandon Kluge will run out of patience, and he'll pick up fifth. That said, now it's Kluge that has to try to find a way around Peterson. Who's gonna try to go for it? He knows that if Kaiser gets back to him, he's not gonna do him any favors. Driving it in deep into turn numbers one and two. Oh, are they gonna get into each other again? Oh, Kluge gets turned back straight away. Around goes the 69, tags the inside wall and the caution flies again. They weren't gonna make it. Sooner or later, it was bound to happen. Spencer Ray picks up the lead with just 18 to go. That was not a pleasant sight to see. You could see it coming a mile off, and it just, it finally happened. Take a look back on what happened to Brandon Kluge here. Gets into Robert Peterson right there, checks up, and Sean Kaiser just punted him. Sent that 69 machine around, who then went into the inside wall. Take a ride on board with the number 69. It's a sizable hit, but salvageable. Spencer Ray leads the field down to Pitt Road. No doubt this will be getting everyone back on cycle when it comes to tires. 17 laps to go, it'll be less than 15. We take the green. Spencer Ray, first in, first out. With the rest of the field, cycling through just behind. Caution flag number three with less than 20 laps to go. We'll be back in a moment. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com.
White surrounded by the iRacing pace truck. It'll be a 14 lap dash to close out racing action here tonight from the Darlington Raceway. That is providing that this goes green to the end, which is, of course, never of any sort of guarantee. Spencer Ray maintains the lead. Robert Peterson has been hot on his heels all night long, running in the number two spot. With Gage Teft and Matt Cherry sitting on row number two. Pace Trump makes the left-hand turn down to pit road as we work out of the final corner. And the green flag back in the air. Once again, Spencer Ray jumping clear. How about Matt Cherry trying to make a lunge to the inside? Picking off the 97, Robert Peterson into the outside wall. Will go Cherry. Hard side slap to the outside wall. Robert Peterson picks up the number two spot. They went three wide for a moment deeper in the pack. Oh, and Cherry again gets into Robert Peterson. Coming off of turn numbers uh, three and four. So after a near miss, we're back on course. Jacob Noyes, Brett Vanderhey, Keith Handlin. All tucked up line astern. So Vanderhey, Noyes and Handlin gonna look set to try and make a run and uh, trouble. For Justin Wilson, turn sideways, front straightaway, no caution. Keep it at green. Take a look back on Justin Wilson. This is what happened to him coming off of the uh, final corner. Just lose the back end and again gets helped around by McColgan. Spins the 09 to the inside. Ten to go this time by. Ray put down the fastest lap of the race last time by. So he is absolutely chugging up there in his run for the race lead. Bear Moore to Brandon Clues in the meantime. Runs seventh and eighth. Just in behind while up the road. Rainwater, Cherry, Teft, Kaiser, all under a blanket. So a lot of those last, uh, well, kind of closing race jitters that look to be getting uh, the better of some of these drivers. Water looking to the inside. Can he pick off the 45? He tried it. Couldn't make it stick. Engaged to have with big problems. They see the slowing on the back straightaway with a lot of major technical problems. That's going to upset Brandon Cluj and Baron Morton. Morton will get around Cluj. Put Morton up to sixth. Oh, and trouble behind. Look out. Purcell into Vandehey. Vandehey scrambles low. Recovers the truck. We will not have a, another crash. And Purcell will lose another one to Keith Handlin. Meanwhile, Noah Rainwater and Sean Kaiser now do get out. Hill five of the 24. Fourth and fifth. Oh, 
boy, there's nowhere to go as Sean Tizer again doors Matt, uh, excuse me, doors Noah Rainwater up in two. Doing a whale of a job here to keep this thing settled and somehow we are keeping this race under green flag conditions. How long will it be though before the odds run out? You'll look to Nathan Shiflett trying to battle Gage Taft, but holy cow, I mean, when Gage Taft is blinking all over the place like that, he doesn't know where he's gonna be. It makes it difficult to battle with somebody, and I have to commend Shiflett for working with what he's got, but they had a really close call there too the last time by, and Keith Handlin had to scramble to avoid both of them. Rainwater still trying to fend off Sean Kaiser for fourth. With three laps to go this time by. I think nothing short of an actual hit to the wall will stop Rainwater from taking that first stop, uh, first spot outside of a podium. Two laps to go. They're going to be hunting for that white flag this time by. Let's try to close out racing action for the Darlington Raceway. There goes Rainwater looking to the inside of Cherry. Trying to go for a podium now. Sean Tizer in the fray as well. Can he make a look for fourth? Rainwater's up to third. In the meantime, way up the road, Spencer Ray with a second and a half between himself and Robert Peterson. It'll be Spencer Ray taking home the checkered flag for the race win tonight. And the drag race with the top five at the line. Kaiser hangs on against Barrett Morton. Oh boy, a very wild race. And Spencer Ray takes win number three of the season. He will now get the chance to burn it down in front of South Carolina on the front straightaway. So Spencer Ray going to continue to celebrate down there on the front straightaway, and uh, we will look set to uh, take a look back to official post-race results here tonight from the Darlington Raceway, and what a wild night of racing it was. As Spencer Ray takes home the race win with Robert Peterson in the number two spot, Noah Rainwater in a last lap pass will pick up the number three spot ahead of Matt Cherry. Sean Kaiser rounds out the top five. Bear Morton, Brandon Cluj, Gage Teft, Keith Handlin, Nathan Shiflett bring home the top half of the field with Brett Van De Haye, Jacob Noy, Stephen Purcell, Daniel Hav, Zachary Kreischer. Uh, the last cars on the lead lap. Maxwell Kroll finishes one down with McColgan, Rucker, and Wilson all laps down as well. Noah Swafford and Nathaniel Ames, the only two drivers to be marked as DNFs in race number nine for the Darlington Raceway tonight. 
that was a very intense way to uh, close out of the race tonight, I think would be putting it mildly. And we'll look set to give a chit chat here, of course, to the driver that came home to take the race win at the end of the night. And uh, it is, of course, the likes of the uh, number six Bush Light Machine of uh, Spencer Ray. Who will join us up here now in the broadcast booth following his celebrations. And Spencer, it's your third win of the season, and this is a big one, right? I mean, that was a win that surely did not come easy. That was a lot of fun. I like this track. Uh, yeah. Kind of walk us through the battle between yourself and Robert Peterson, because I know right after the pit stops about lap 65, it looked like there was a bit of a struggle to get by him, even with such fresher tires. Yeah, he's uh, pretty good here, so that was difficult, but uh, eventually it worked out. Well, so far, uh, two of your race wins have come at some very difficult racetracks, Iowa, and then, of course, tonight here at Darlington. It's another tricky track coming up next, though, at the Phoenix Raceway. Will we be seeing you go for win number four? Uh, I can hope. Not very good there, though, so we'll see what happens. We will see what happens indeed. Thank you for joining us up here tonight, Spencer. Congratulations on win number three, and we'll see you next week in Avondale. Yep. Spencer Ray joining us up here from Victory Lane, and that'll take us down to the number two spot. Robert Peterson will be the driver that uh, takes home the number two spot here at the end of the night. And uh, it was, again, for Robert Peterson, a, a fairly wild night as far as race nation is considered. And, uh, well, Robert, you led a good chunk of this race, but it was not meant to be. Boy, you had a good fight there with Spencer in the, in the second half. Yeah, it was a lot of fun racing with Spencer there. He just uh, a little bit faster than me, just had my number there. Couldn't quite get to him all race, but, you know, great result. A lot of fun. Uh, hopefully have more like that in the future. Let's talk about the track itself. It really is a, a circuit that's unlike anything else on the NASCAR calendar. It's got the narrowest, I guess, true racing groove. How does that impact how you approach a track as difficult as Darlington? Well, you know, it's a lot of just trying to stay out of trouble, you know, trying to stay out of the wall, try not to get into any of the lap cars when you get to them. You know, it's real technical. It's you're racing the track a lot more than you're racing your actual competitors. But, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. It's a whole different thing than everything else we go to. One of my favorite places to come to. You're going to chalk another one up in both the top 10 and the top five columns on the season, but still uh, still looking at zero for the win column. Will we be seeing you finally put one onto the boards come Phoenix? We'll see, man. It's <laughs> You know, I just I always feel like I'm just a little step below some of the fastest guys in the league here. Um, you know, it's going to depend a lot on luck. Who does and doesn't show up. But, uh, you know, I think I got a chance at some of the tracks coming up. Well, sounds like a plan. We'll see you then when we go racing next week in Avondale, Arizona. Congratulations in the meantime on taking number two. Thank you, sir. We'll see you there. Robert Peterson joining us up from the second position uh, here tonight, and that'll take us down to the third and final driver. It is back-to-back -back right. podiums for Noah Rainwater as, uh, well, Noah, you come home and uh, pick up a bit of a surprise third place, picking off Matt Cherry on the final lap. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was intense right there. I knew I was faster than him because he was loose off every, every corner, but uh, I just didn't know if I was going to be able to pass him or not that hard it was. Thankfully, he got loose and was able to keep it up top, and I was able to get underneath him, but... Sean was coming on my rear end fast, so I was like, I got to go soon. But I hate that caution came out there at the end, that late caution. I had really good long run speed. I was hoping it'd stay green, maybe catch Spencer. I know you were in a lot of the thick of the fighting so far all race long. Uh, is Does Darlington throw up a bit of a different intensity compared to a lot of the other tracks we run to? Oh, absolutely. With how tight it is on the corners, and then with how much the tire wear is, like, you really got to be mentally tough on yourself to race yourself and not race everybody else. Like, that's why on the restarts, I'd go from fifth to, like, ninth and just be back there cruising. But it's just so hard to let those people buy because you don't want to lose a track position. We've got two races left in the regular series season, and if you can keep this pace up, it looks like you're going to be more uh, definitely a shoe in to get into the chase. 
uh, but how do you reckon your odds stack up for going for a title? I, I don't know. We got some fast guys in here, and Spencer's pretty fast. I have yet to beat him, so I don't know. Matt Cherry's pretty fast, too. I hope I at least get to make it and fight it out, but we'll see. If it's the right track, it's the right track. Well, sounds like a plan. We'll see how things are going to stack up when we go racing next week at the Phoenix Raceway. Congratulations on taking the third-place finish, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. That was Noah Rainwater joining us up from the third spot on the podium, and that is going to be it then for racing action here tonight from the uh, Phoenix Raceway. An absolutely barn burner of a show here tonight, and uh, it is only going to get more intense as the week goes along. The Beer League, remember, swings out to Portugal. We, of course, have the VSCA Sports Car Championship with their first ever possible rain race at the 12 hours of Seabrook at the Seabrook International Raceway for the Sunshine State on Saturday. That'll be uh, starting at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, running all the way through to 9 p.m. And then, of course, a doubleheader this week at Circuit of the Americas. First with the Speed Tires Plus Cup Series, and then the Classic IndyCar Series following right after. All that and much more coming up on Green Flag TV. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. My name is Vanilla Rempel, bringing you all the action from start to finish. We'll see you all next week when we go racing in Avondale.